Hey everybody, hope everybody's doing well. So our next project is going to be uh, a fairly rare radio and this is a FADA radio, F-A-D-A, -A, Model 68. FADA, a radio and electric company, was based in Long Island City, New York and this radio um, was designed in 1939, was released in 1940 and I can't find any documentation on this thing. Even Nostalgia Air doesn't have a schematic for it. Um, I found a couple of other places where I can find a schematic, and I've downloaded one, and this is it here. But I don't have anything as far as alignment instructions or tube lineup or anything like that. So, um, so we're gonna we're gonna wing this one a little bit, but that's good because it helps it helps to trace out where things are and learn a little bit more about the radio. So, what's unique about this one? Well, here's the first thing that's unique. And we're going to spend a little bit of time today talking about ballast tubes. So this radio um, includes a ballast tube. Now that's not very common. Um, there is actually a FADA Model 63, which came out in 1937, which is a similar circuit and also has a ballast tube. Same, same act, actually same one. So what is a ballast tube? Ballast tube is really nothing more than a dropping resistor. So it takes your. This is a transformerless set. So basically, it takes your uh, your AC um, voltage, 120 volts in this case, and the objective here is to basically cut it in half. You want to cut it in half, or somewhere around there in half. Um, this radio also has a pilot light. So what we have to do is further cut the voltage down to protect this pilot light, which is going to be about 6 volts. So if you look in detail at this configuration, you'll see that there's a 130 ohm resistor, doesn't tell you how many watts it is in this tube. And then if you look a little bit further down, right here, there's a 15 ohm resistor which goes to your pilot light. So why did they do this? Why didn't they just use resistors? Well, I, I don't know. I tried to look at the history and I wasn't able to find out, but I don't know when 5 or 10 or 15 watt resistors were actually common. I would imagine not very much in the in the 30s. Matter of fact, I remember working on an Atwater Kent Model 44, which had a ballast resistor attached to the um, the power supply, which was a piece of ceramic with wire wrapped around it, um, and that's what they used. So I don't think it was common to have large resistors like that then. So what they chose to do was use a ballast, and what a ballast is basically an eight-pin octal tube with a glass envelope, <coughs> and it allows the heat to dissipate because it's a glass tube. Matter of fact, looking at this radio, that, that ballast tube was probably the one that generated the most heat in this radio. I've never really seen one. I've never really got to play with one. But I have to assume that the ballast tube generated more heat than the rectifier tube does. So that's an interesting uh, concept. So what are we going to do? You can't buy these things, and I wouldn't want to. Why would I want to put a, a heat generator in there? So we're going to use our old um, capacitive reactance trick on this one again. And I'm going to walk you through step by step how we figure out what we need this time. So let's learn a little bit more about the radio. We're going to pull the shot back a little bit. And let's see what the tube lineup is. So first of all, our rectifier is a 25Z5. And this is a 6-pin tube. <clears throat> so we're going to write that on here. 25Z5. Then we have a 6SA7, and then we have a 6K7, and then we have a 6SQ7, and then our output tube is a 25LG, L6, I'm sorry. So if we take all of our tubes and we add up the voltages that are required. We've got 25, 50, 62, we have 68 volts that we need for filament. How do we know that? Well, we know that this is a series filament radio. How can we tell? Right here. You'll see all of our tubes are in one line. It's like a Christmas light set. If one tube filament pops, nothing's going to work. Okay? So we have filaments in series on this radio. And we need a total of 68 volts to power this thing. That's basically what it is. Okay? Now, there's a couple of other things we need to know. 
What is the current draw of these tubes? Because they are in series, they all have to be the same. So we're going to take our tube manual right here, we're going to pull the shot back, and we're going to just look up one of these tubes. So let's look up the 25Z5 and see what we can find. I know it's going to be somewhere in the back here. Here we go. Let's zoom in so you can see that. <clears throat> so there's our 25Z5. And the thing we're looking for is the amperage. And it says right here, the amperage is 0 0.3. So we're going to write that on our little piece of paper here. 0 0.3 amps. Okay? That's the information we need to figure out what type of um, capacitor we need to generate our required voltage. That's all we really need to know, right? We know the line voltage coming in the wall is 120 volts, and we know the frequency is 60 hertz. So with those four pieces of information, we can determine the right uh, configuration that we need for this radio. So let's go to the computer, and we'll plug that in, and let's see what we come up with. Okay, the website we're going to use to figure this out is electronicsandmore.com, and they have a resources page, and there's a bunch of calculators. And the calculators we're going to look for, this is basically made for calculators for radio repair and more. I'm going to try to hold this camera steady, so I apologize in advance. And if we go down, we're going to find something that says voltage drop for tube filaments, right there. Okay, let's plug in our numbers. So we know the AC voltage supply is 120 volts. We know we're 60 hertz. We know that our cumulative filament voltage is 68 volts. Remember, we added the tubes together. We know that our current draw is 0 0.3. And we're not going to have a surge limiter resistor because we don't need it because of the capacitance that we're using. So let's calculate it and let's see what we come up with. So according to the calculator, right there, we need an 8 microfarad fan cap. That's what we're going to use in this thing. And that will help us to get the voltage that we need. It's that simple. Okay? So I wanted to show you that. I'm going to put a link to this calculator also in the description. So let's go back to the radio. Okay, so here's the actual radio itself. And there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six tube sockets. And one thing you'll notice is that this is an octal keyed circuit socket, this is an octal keyed socket, this is an octal keyed socket, same here, this is a six pin socket, and this is our filter cap. So when I first got this radio I said, oh okay, well this must be the uh, the ballast resistor because it's not the same as the others, and uh, I was going crazy trying to figure out like how do you get a six pin tube, well you don't, because if you look at the schematic right here, and you look at that ballast tube diagram again, we're going to zoom in, you see that they're showing a keyed. See that key in the center there? That tells me that our ballast resistor is not keyed. So upon further investigation looking under the radio, I determined that the power cord goes in right here. Remember, there's no documentation on this thing, so I have no clue. It goes right to this socket. So this is going to be our ballast um, socket right here. This socket right here is for our 25Z5. 25Z5 is a six pin tube. Okay? <clears throat> so that we know. We also know that the socket over here next to the antenna is going to be a 6SA7. We know that. We know that this is going to be a 6K7. We know that that's our ballast. That's going to be our output tube, 25L6. And this is going to be a 6SQ7. So that's our tube lineup, and of course this is our 25Z5 rectifier. So the main thing to remember here is that the ballast resistor is all AC. There's no rectification happening at that point. It's simply taking your AC and dropping it down to something else to get rectified. Right? So we're bringing it, bringing it down, we're putting it into this tube, and it's feeding all the other tubes. 68 volts will go across all five of these tubes and will be exactly what we need. That's really all you need to think about from a ballast perspective. So how are we going to wire this thing? 
Well, let's talk about that. So we have an 8-pin sock socket here. This is basically what it says on the schematic. I've just blown it up so you could see it. So essentially, between pin 2 and 8 is 15 ohms. That's the resistor that we will use to drop the voltage down for the uh, dial light. That's going to give us our 6 volts right here. We're going to keep that. Matter of fact, I have one right here that we're going to use. It's a 5 watt resistor, 15 ohms. This is going to be what we use. This resistor here, because which goes between pin 3 and pin 6, says 130 ohms. Well, we're going to replace that, remember, with an 8 microfarad fan cap. That's what we're doing. So we're basically replacing this resistor with a capacitor between pins 3 and 6. And you'll see that on this configuration, pins 2 and 5 are tied together, pins 5 and 7 are tied together, 6 and 8 are tied together. How are we going to do all that on this socket? Well, I have one of these, and it's an 8-pin octal, and I can pretty much build everything I need to build on here. So, for example, if I look at pin 2, like that, in theory, I just have to do this, right? There's my 15 ohm resistor. Then I have to figure out how I'm going to mount the fan cap. I don't know if I'm going to put the fan cap here or mount it underneath, but I could also put my jumper wires and then figure out how I'm going to enclose this in something so it's safe. So that's going to be the objective. <clears throat> I can just completely bypass that and do all the work underneath the radio. I don't want to do that because I want to keep it somewhat realistic. So I need to figure out how I'm going to handle this, but that's going to be in the next episode. I'll have some ideas that I'm going to think about. Like I've got this plastic bottle, which maybe I can make like a fake tube or something. I don't know. I have to think about it. The capacitor is really not going to generate a lot of heat, and I don't expect that the 15 ohm resistor is going to gener generate a lot of heat either. So uh, in the next episode, you'll understand what we're going to do. So that's our plan for today. Our plan for today is to build the ballast uh, device. Um, I have the 8 microfarad fan cap coming sometime today, so it's not going to be in this video. It'll be in the next one. But I also want to show you something else that's a little bit unique or weird about this radio that I'm not thrilled about but that's okay. And that is the oscillator and the antenna coils are just left exposed. Typically these things would be in a cover in a metal can or something to protect them. So when you work on this radio, if you look at the height, these are basically the tallest point aside from here. So if you try to stand this up on upside down and work on it, it's going to lean back and put pressure on this coil. I've already ohmed out the coils. The coils are good, so I don't have any problem there. And if you look at the schematic, which I'll put a link to the schematic as well. well actually, I can't because it's not online, but I'll find a way to get it to you. This tells you what all the um, readings should be on the oscillator coil and the antenna coil. Once we confirm that this thing is working, then we're going to take it all apart and clean it. It's got a pretty rusty chassis. I've done some work here just to see if I can get it clean, and I can. So the rust does come off. I'm going to use a little bit of navel jelly and some Scotch-Brite pads. And I should be able to get rid of most of the rust on this thing. But I'm going to need to disassemble some of the stuff up here. And I do want to get these IF cans apart. If you look deep inside this one, you guys see how much dirt's in there? There's got to be some silva mica disease going on in there. There's got to be. So we may have to replace the mica sheets in there. We'll find out. When we get it out, we'll take a look at it. And uh, we'll see what we got to do. So that's the plan with this radio. Um, again, it's a FADA Model 68. Fairly unique. It has a Art Deco wood case, which I'll show you in the next episode. I've already started stripping it. The one that I have, someone painted it brown. And I think I'll put a picture of it for you right here. But that's it for now, guys. I hope everybody has a great day, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.